Alright, so hello everybody. It's been a little while since we've talked to each other or since we've seen each other. Today I figured we'll talk about uh, various data types in Java. Uh, you may have noticed that something is a little bit different. I have different headphones. I just got these recently. They're really nice and comfy. So I'm using those, and the reason why there's a weird green looking cable running is those are Bluetooth headphones, and my desktop doesn't have a Bluetooth module, so that's why I'm using a cable to use them with my computer. That's not important. Today we're going to talk about something more important, and I figured we'll be talking about two things today, or two topics at once, because they are the second one is like really easy to grasp, so it's like a example of the usage of the first topic we're going to talk about. But I will explain that when we get to it. So the first topic I want to talk about is going to obviously tell by uh, this lovely command prompt window right here. We're going to talk about data types. So I already have my sample file prepared and uh, why would we want to talk about data types? Well in Java we want to work with certain like uh, applications and forms of data so I either user input or some text input or text output and for that we have to use data types uh, so <laughs> uh, in Java you have to specify the data type there are various data types that we're going to cover uh, first the fir first I should like mention various the various kinds of data types that are there. So, uh, for example, uh, we have bytes, shorts, integers, longs, floats, doubles, booleans, and characters, or co like car like characters. Um, so the thing that is like important to remember is that. A byte is, as the name suggests, a byte, so it takes the size only of one byte. I'm not going to go into much technical detail, just only the basics, so bear with me. The main things you want to focus on, uh, or we are going to use most likely, are integers, floats, doubles, and booleans. Maybe even characters, but let me explain why these are the important ones. Booleans are used for if statements, so if something is true, it uses a boolean, it returns a boolean value. A boolean can store uh, only two forms of data, either a true value or a false value. That's self-explanatory. Doubles, floats, and integers can store numbers. And the difference between them is how long or what form of data they can store. They do store numbers, but the main difference is what types of numbers they can store. For example, the most used data type for numbers is an integer. An integer can store a fairly large amount of number, like a fairly large number, but that may not be enough in some cases. There are also longs which store literally um, like itself, like if you were to multiply two ints, it would give you that output. I'm not really sure, that's what I'm guessing, but um, I haven't used longs in like almost any of the tutorials that I've seen, almost no one was using longs, they were mostly using integers or floats or doubles, so we will most likely be using those as well, because those are the most simple ones to work with. Uh, also, the difference between the integer and float and doubles is the amount of decimal points you can get. or Well, not decimal points, but decimal digits. So basically, the numbers behind the decimal point. For example, a float can store up to seven decimal digits, from six to seven actually, and doubles can store pretty much more than tw pretty much twice as that, but plus one more, so fifteen decimal digits. The only thing you have to remember: floats and doubles are used for decimal digits. We will be most likely using floats, and integers are used to store whole numbers. We will be using most likely integers instead of longs. So, this is just a basic overview. So let's talk about numbers real quick. So there, are, so to show you an example of each and every data type that there exists in Java, you don't need to learn everything, but to show you like the most used ones and even some that aren't really used as much. 
So, uh, first, let's actually show you a byte, what a byte would look like. So, in Java, we can write out the word byte, because it's kind of similar to c -sharp or C++, where you have to write the data type first, and then you can store it as a form of data. So, we type out byte, and let's call it my num, because it's a number, or let's just call it num as a number, why not? And let's give it the value of 100. One thing you have to remember is that bytes can only store from minus 128 to, ma to 127. So pretty much a really low range. So most applications would even exceed that. But there are some applications that just need only like two digit numbers. So it's most likely that you will want to use a byte because it's more efficient and it doesn't take up as much space and memory. But I'm getting sidetracked. And then we're going to type in system. Oops. System. Uh, dot. Out. Dot. Uh, print. Uh, ln for printing a line. And here we're going to type in num for number. So if we decide to compile this. And just check if we're even recording. Okay, we are good. So let me just compile this can see it worked. So let's run this. And what you will notice, it printed out the number that we typed in, so 100, so it obviously works. Um, so that's a byte, you can pretty much print out that if you want to have that. Uh, there are also shorts, shorts aren't really used that much, at least I haven't seen anyone use them as much. But essentially, shorts are a slightly bigger area of play for you, so you get a bit more of a you know headroom with what sort of data you can work with. So uh, an example of using a short is really simple. If I type in to actually show that this is actually a byte, let me just type in 129 because this will in fact be too big for this data type, I think. Whoops, wrong button. Yeah, and as you can see, you cannot possibly convert from an integer to a byte because it's too high of a number. So it can only store up to 127. So let me just write in 127 and try to compile it now. As you can see, it compiles just fine, and if we decide to run it, it works just fine. That's because we went over the limit. The limit is 127, so you cannot go any higher than that. If you want to go any higher than that, the next leg up essentially is a short. To show you this, I'm going to type in 129 again, but this time I'm going to change the data type to short. Because this is most likely what you would come across if you were to use this. So let me compile this. As you can see, no errors have occurred. If we decide to run this code, it will be number 129 because we are in the range of the number that is allowed for us to use. The limit for this data type, for the short data type, is 32,767. You don't have to remember that, just to remember it's a fairly, it's a much larger number compared to a byte. But it's not large enough in certain cases. In most cases, if you were to store a number, and one of the simpler ones even, it's recommended that you use the int data type, the int or otherwise known as integer. You have seen me use this in a couple of my video tutorials already. The reason for that is you can store much higher values with this, so you pretty much are uh, getting rid of one problem where the user might want to type in a big number, but it wouldn't like count for it because it is out of the range so it will spit out the error it doesn't know what to do with it so now we have an integer um, so simply put the only difference between all of these is and these are still whole numbers so if I were to print this out right now again if I were to compile it it will print out the exact same thing so the only difference there is either you use something that gives you a bit more of a leg room just in case someone types in a bigger number, or you just use a data type you want the user to use in a certain range. But I'm getting sidetracked again. So this is really cool. These are like whole numbers and stuff. 
But is it really like that necessary to store this number? Well, there's also another one. It's called a long, and a long can store a really large number. Look, longs are not used as much. There are certain cases where they are used to compensate in case you don't have enough, let's say, data, or run out data, enough space for your data to be stored. So, to put it simply, the only thing you should worry about is either it will spit out that it has incompatible data types and it's possibly a lossy conversion, so you should bump up your data type or it will just error out because of a different reason altogether. So, in most cases you will see me use integers because it's a really simple data type and it's really common across multiple programming languages. So it's really easy to work with. The, um, but let's say we want to dis display a number with a decimal point. Let's, let's say we add here 9, 0.98. Watch what happens if I compile this set of code it says that there is an error. It also says you, to you that you cannot possibly, you cannot even see it, that you cannot possibly convert a lossy conversion from double to int. And this is where it already gives you some sort of a, uh, some sort of bit of information that you can use. So there are two forms of data types that can store this type of a value, which is a floating point number. Um, a really cool reason why you may want to use floating point numbers is to display numbers to a certain decimal digit, which is great for accuracy, or to show how accurate a certain system is. To use that, there are two data types, or at least the ones that I know of, and that most people probably know of, and it's called float and double. The main difference between these is, again, the range. But there's one thing in common, they can both display decimal point numbers, which is what you might want to use in some cases. So to show you this, I'm going to change this data type from an integer to a double. Once I compile that, uh, bear in mind that in the code sample that you might most likely will download, it will have all the previous ones commented out with the examples shown. So. Pretty much the only thing that's different between those is the various data types that they are used. So just don't get scared if I'm mentioning something and you see this huge text file even though I'm only changing this one thing. That's just to keep everything in the same coding space. That didn't really make sense, did it? So anyway, let's compile this. It should not work. As you can see, it does work. So if we decide to run this, it will in fact display the number that we typed in, which is 129.98. So that's cool and all, but there are also doubles. So doubles, th these are doubles. The, the another thing you can use are floats, and they do pretty much the same thing. Again, the only difference being that uh, the O, oh, as you can see, it doesn't work. So here's the thing. Um, floats require a bit of an extra thing in that. Uh, the value, if you want to use a float data type, it should end with an F. Because it doesn't know how to store the, the value. It doesn't, know, it doesn't know what type of value it is. So in most cases, if you're using a floating float number, a floating point number, you have to add in the F. Watch what happens if I decide to compile it now. Now it doesn't draw any errors. So why did double let us work without the F and floats didn't? This is where one of the fundamental differences between certain languages comes into play. For example, in C-sharp, if you type in a float, you don't have to write the F at the end. You have the option to do, to do so, but you do not have to do so. It's up to you what you decide to do with it. So floats in Java work in a way that you have to add in the F because it signifies that it's a floating point number. So if I decide to run this bit of code now, it prints out pretty much the exact same thing as it did up here, with the only difference being that the data type has changed from a double to a float and we have added the F. Now the output is still the same, but the F is not here. The F just does one thing. 
it just tells our compiler hey this is a floating point number so we make sure to store it as a floating point number in memory uh, let me just check my notes real quick you can also store scientific numbers but I'm not gonna go into that because it's not really that important in some cases it is but I'm just trying to cover the basics here so then there are booleans booleans are as, a, as I mentioned a few minutes ago the form of data that is used to declare if something has been if something is true or false for this example I'm going to do one thing I'm going to change this to a boolean and let's call it uh, I don't know fun and that will equal true because everything is fun and then we create another boolean and call it um, I don't know learning which we are learning but for the sake of this example I'm gonna say it's false because some of you are most likely not learning anything um, so now we're going to do also one more thing I'm going to take this bit of code and I'm going to and yes some of you will criticize me for copying it like this I know there are better editors for this but I'm showing you a really simple and fun example here so just bear with me and I'm going to been learning and what would happens if we decide to compile it? It will compile just fine, but what will the output be? As you can see, it says that the output is true and false, which is correct because the fun variable or the boolean called fun, which is right here being printed out, it has the value of true, hence why it's printed out as the first one. Then we are printing out the value of the variable learning. So our boolean learning has the variable false. So that's why it prints out false. And this is the sort of output a if statement uses to determine if something is correct or not. So an if statement is simply put some sort of logic. So if, if it's raining, you would say it's true because it might be raining. So it's true, it's raining. So the boolean value of, this st of the if statement, if it's raining, is true, then the value will be set to true. If it's sunny and you ask, hey, is it learning outside? Learning. <laughs> it's, is it raining outside? And you say it's not. Then it will return false because it isn't true. It doesn't like this, you know, uh, look, I'm oversimplifying here. And I know it's not good to oversimplify things, but just to make sure that everybody understands what I'm talking about, it's really important. Alright, so we have covered numbers and buildings. What else is that to store? Our mistake could store characters. And strings. Uh, strings we actually worked with before. If you remember in the first video, I, I talked about strings and how strings are used to store text. So I'm not going to cover those. But, I am in fact going to cover characters, because it's something that you may want to use if you want to determine if a character is capitalized or not. So, let's go over that, shall we? So, let's first off define some characters. So, let's in fact get rid of all of this. Well, actually, almost all of it. I'm going to get rid of this. And get rid of this one line right here and we're going to get rid of this line fully right here so uh, let's define a character variable to define a character variable in Java it's really simple you just type in car or char whatever you want to call it and it will you know highlight it for you as a character variable then let's let's set a few uh, values so let's say that our A character will have the ASCII value of 65, because that's what the value is. You can also define multiple variables of the same data type just by adding here a comma and then another data type if it's not the value. You have seen me done this already a few times, so I'm not gonna bother you with this. Just it's a much cleaner way of pr pr pretty much telling everyone like hey I'm trying to uh, 
store multiple variables, what should I do? You can use it like this or you can use arrays, but that's for another point. So what you see me do right now is I'm going to print out each and every character from its ASCII value, which it should do, but I'm not really sure. You can pretty much look up ASCII tables, which is pretty much the method of how a computer see sees characters. A character being this one letter here, but you know, that's just a thing. So, let's compile it. And let's run it. And what you will see, it prints out the ASCII values, or actually the result, if you gave it these values. So, we have created a character variable A with a value of 65, and what it does, it converts it directly back into ASCII for us, so we do not have to work with some crazy magician things in other languages you would. It just converts it automatically, which is in some cases really nice. So, the same thing goes for B. We want to open up the character B. It gets the ASCII code of 66, and the ASCII code of 66 relates to the bigger B right here. Same thing goes for C. We have the ASCII value of 67, and the and the ASCII value of 67 correlates to the bigger letter C. And we can pretty much go on to print out the entire alphabet like this, but it's not ideal, you know. It, there are better ways to print this out. Uh, I guess. I, I know I covered this before, but um, just to have the full package and so that no one complains, I'm going to mention strings real quick. So I'm going to keep this A thing here. And I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm going to change this to a string. One important thing to remember, in my last video I said something wrong, I did correct it later down the line in the video as I was editing it. Simply put, this stars text and it's a really sim- a really- sorry. And it's a really familiar syntax to those who are working with C Sharp or C++, not Python. That was one of the mistakes I said last time. I did correct myself in the video during editing. So, I just want to clarify that I know that I made a mistake and I'm aware of it. So, let's say you want to store, this, store a string. Let's say, um, hi, my name is Thomas. Thomas, not type. Thomas, there we go. And what I'm asking this program or this code to do is, hey, I want you to print out this text that I just wrote in, which is, hi, my name is Thomas. And let's add a winky face, cause why not? I mean, let's not do that, let's just go on with it. I'm just messing around here. So let's compile this. It, as you can see, it compiles without any issues. It's really simple bits of code. And let, let's let's just run it, you know, let's see what it does. As you can see, it prints out the text we typed in, which is, Hi, my name is Thomas. So it obviously works. So this pretty much ends off the section for uh, various data types in Java. Now I did mention that I want to talk about various types of data casting and this is a really simple example I found. I actually didn't come up with this by myself. All the credit to this example goes to uh, V3 Schools which is a really good resource. You should have a look back. Uh, I'm not going to put any links there, you can just find it uh, by yourself. But basically, uh, what you can do is... How casting works is really s like pretty much the exact same ordeal as it, as it would be with Python, but it works in a... It's written in a different way, but it works the same way. So let's say we have a uh, integer and let's call it um, to signify that we are making changes I'm going to type in like this so int num for integer number and let's give it the number value of 9 then I'm going to have a value called my double oh well, not my double, it sounds really weird let's call it a double num so we're going to do double not w but double I'm going to do uh, let's 
call it double num. There we go. And we're going to take the. Uh, I'm going to take the uh, value that we created before, which is the end num. So what we did just now is we have pretty much. Uh, what we've done here is we've told Java, hey, I want you to cast this variable called a num which is right here as an integer and cast it as a double and store it into double num. So if I were to print these out one by one, so we do system um, out uh, oh my cursor is in the way uh, print ln and then we do this and let's 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 just do um, it num first. I'm gonna copy this line of code once again, and I'm going to change this to double. So we have the double num variable. So now, if we decide to compile this code, it will work. But you will notice there is a slight difference. So we defined our value 9, so why does this number, the double num, have the value 9.0? Remember what I said about floats and doubles storing the numbers with decimal points? That's what happened here, it just took this number and stored it with a decimal point. And since integers are full number variables, they don't have anything behind the decimal point. So to signify and to show you that it is in fact a double, that it converted it successfully for us, it added in like a 9.0, so that's what it did. You can do the same thing for dump for floats and other different types, but this is a, a really simple example. What you could do is you could also pretty much narrow down your casting. What I mean by this is you could manually print down the volume. Let me show you what will happen if we do so. So let's just change this number to I don't know 9.99 for example, and let's say I wanna and let's change this to a double because this now became a double, so we now have it as a double. And let's say I wanna convert this double right here into an integer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this, but this also became quite confusing, so let me also convert this down. So this one will be a double num, this one will be a int num to make it really simple to understand. And we're going to change this to a double num, but here's the difference here. Um, so let's say we want to cast this double num variable right here, which we have created into an integer. To cast it to an integer it's really simple. You put in brackets before the data type you want to cast and just type into the data type. In our case it will be an integer. So what we've done here is we've pretty much told it, hey, I want you to pretty much uh, take whatever is in here, so pretty much take whatever is in this number and convert it to an integer and store that integer as the end num value. So watch what happens. The output should be slightly different this time around because we're not using the full number 9. We are using the number 9.99. .9 so watch what happens if we compile this and run the code afterwards. As you can see it printed out in pretty much the same fashion with the only difference being that our double has the value 9.99 and it converted it to this number 9 right here because I have them stored like this. To signify that it actually makes sense in the order so you can see the change far clearly, I'm going to put the data type before it so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So this is what happened. It took this number 9.99 which is stored as a double right here and it converted it to an integer using casting, so it converted using this integer right here because we told it like, hey, I want you to convert the double num, double variable, into an integer and store that as an integer called int num and then we print out each and every one of these so you can see the difference what it makes. 
so yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't know why I didn't did even create this file here, <laughs> even though I didn't use it. So that's pretty much it. Um, all the changes and stuff. I will try to add them into this one block of code, so you guys can like see the changes going line by line in the file itself. And I know it's been a bit of a longer and more rambly video, but it's really important to understand these things so we get to use them and make our lives a lot simpler later down the line. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys and that you found something interesting in it. And uh, if you like my tutorial series on various programming languages, just let me know what language I should cover next. As soon as I'm done with Java, with the basics and the main things you have to know, we're going to cover more interesting stuff, hopefully. But again, if you have a certain programming language you want me to try out or just see me toy around with it in my coding time lapse videos, which I'm trying to make more often now because they are fun to do and fun to work with. And all I have to do is just turn on my screen recording software, which in my case is OBS, and just record like three to four hours of coding, hopefully finishing the project in the process even like debugging if it doesn't go right the first time uh, even though I cut out the debugging because I don't seem I, I don't like feel that it's like fun to watch someone like debug code it's like boring in my opinion if it doesn't work on the first try but that's what like, happens you know it, it does happen from time to time I'm rambling on for far too long I hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like Subscribe and I hope to see you guys in the next one and make sure to stay safe and share this video around and please subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!